Hello. Hello, Professor Yagi. Yes. This is Adam Smith calling from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize. Hi. Hi. Many congratulations on the award. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Is it okay to talk just for a very few minutes to record a quick interview for the website? Uh, just... Sure. There is a. I'm on a flight and uh, they're just pulling out of the gate. But uh, yeah, I'll be delighted to talk to you as long as the connection is on. Uh, how very kind. And yeah. <laughs> what, a place, yeah. <laughs> what a place to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> well, they called me as I was landing from my other flight. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you never know when the yeah. news will come. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And yep. oh gosh, your first reaction uh, to the news? Astonished, um, delighted, yeah, overwhelmed. Uh, um, special in so yeah. many ways. Um, you're known as the father of the field of metal organic frameworks. Yes. Uh, yes. You're, I think, perhaps the first Nobel laureate to be born in Jordan. Is I don't know. <laughs> That's very possible. That's very possible. Um, that may very well be yes. What a uh, what a what a journey you have been on with your chemistry and your life. Amazing. <laughs> it, it has. It has. I mean, you know, I I I grew up in a very humble home, and uh, you know, we were um, dozen of us in a in one small room, sharing it with the with the uh, cattle. That we used to raise. <laughs> so yes, yes, and uh, you know, I was I was born to uh, in a family of refugees, and uh, my parents barely could read or write. I think my father finished sixth grade, and my mother couldn't even read and write. So, so it's it's quite a journey, and uh, it's uh, science allows you to do it. I mean, science is the greatest equalizing force in the world yes yes indeed no. and, it, and it, it, it's a testament to the fact that talent exists everywhere and if one just gives it some opportunity to thrive i agree yeah i agree Sm smart people talented people skilled people exist everywhere that's why we really should focus on unleashing their potential mm. through providing them with opportunity Indeed, yeah. indeed. And it's, it, it, it's a huge... <laughs> I'm sorry to catch you when this announcement is <laughs> no, not... <laughs> okay. No, 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 that's okay, that's okay. It, 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 it's, it must be extraordinary to have seen this field flourish to the extent that it has. It's just been 30 years since, yeah. you, you know, your first forays uh, into it and what... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I started at Arizona State University, my independent career, and uh, my dream was to publish at least one paper that receives a hundred citations. <laughs> now, now, now my students say that we have, our group has garnered over 250,000 citations. So, so yes, it was just totally unexpected. Um, but again, the beauty of chemistry is that if you learn how to control matter on the atomic and molecular level, well, the potential is great. And, uh, you know, we opened a gold mine mm. in that way. And, uh, and, and the field grew and it allowed uh, people to come in and, and become stars in their own right due to their own contribution. That's the beautiful thing about this field is that we are... Um, I would say it's a it's it's a field that allows a scientist to go in and find their direction and and build their career, build their ideas, uh, and become become pillars of the field. <laughs> yeah. Fulfilling this joint objective of allowing people to be so intellectually curious and also potentially um, solving certain problems, or at least helping alleviate certain problems. Like yes. Polluted water. Yes, I mean, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 like I said, I think, I think once once you control matter on the atomic molecular level, well, now you can imagine things that you want to make to address a specific problem, whether it's a large problem facing society like water mm. and CO two capture, or or uh, making sensors, or um, or uh, uh, therapeutics. Uh, 
converting harmful molecules into harmless molecules. All these become possible because you can control and tweak and, uh, uh, well, first construct frameworks and then go in and, and almost surgically attach uh, or take away components that allow you to, to build the appropriate cavities uh, that seek out specific components of a much larger mixture. So mm -hmm. um, it's very, very exciting. I mean, it really is the dream of chemists is to be able to build chemical structures by the building block approach. And we figured out the recipe on how to do that, the conditions under which to do that. And, and what we found is a immense diversity of frameworks and correspondingly immense uh, number of applications. It's it's so nice that today allows one to focus once again on the just the beauty of chemistry and the possibilities. <laughs> well, actually, thank you for mentioning that. Actually, I I really I was originally very interested in the beauty of molecules. In fact, when I when I was 10 years old, I went to the library and opened a book, and there I found molecules, we call, call them stick and ball diagrams of uh, molecules. I didn't know they were molecules, but somehow I was immediately drawn to them. And later I learned that these are molecules that make up, uh, you know, our world. And, uh, and since then, I've chosen the problems to investigate uh, chemical problems, intellectual problems, based on the beauty of the molecules that are to be made and uh, that are studied. So uh, <laughs> I didn't, I mean, I don't know if you want to print this, but when I set out, I didn't set out to solve the world's carbon problem or, or the water problem. I, I set out to, to build beautiful things and solve an intellectual problem. That's just lovely. And thank goodness for libraries, eh? <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, younger, when I give lectures to younger students, uh, some of them uh, ask me, how do you become passionate about something? How do you, how do you uh, fall in love with chemistry? And I, I keep saying, just pick anything in your surrounding and think deeply about well, what is it made? What is made of? And uh, and dig deeper. And the deeper you dig, the more beautiful things you find. That, that things are are constructed. So that's at least um, allows you an opportunity, the best chance to to be attracted to chemistry. So you don't you don't need don't need to have a, ma a magnificent plan. <laughs> Uh, yet at such an early age, you just need to have, you need to go with what is drawing you towards a, towards a, a problem or a field. That's, yeah, that's deeply encouraging. We're going to be getting into trouble any second. Some some uh, <laughs> <laughs> someone's yes. going to tell you to yes. turn that off. Um, and I guess perhaps on this flight, as news of this spreads around the plane, there will be celebrations. Who knows? <laughs> at, least, at least among those sitting close, sitting yes. closest to you, who yes. must have been listening, yes. Yes. interested. Right. Yeah. Um, anyway, okay. I'm so grateful to you for talking to us. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you. You. Thank you. Congratulations thank you. again. Bye bye. 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 You just heard a special episode of Nobel Prize Conversations. For more listening, we think you'll enjoy our brand new bonus episode, where Adam reveals what really gets our laureates celebrating. You can hear it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.